Hi Gum here, ready to teach you how to put pictures what go on walls and stuff like. Awkward silence, begin. Uh, Rightio, here we are in Hammer Editor. Uh, forgive me for making it look a bit alien, this is just the interface I prefer since I use keyboard shortcuts now. Uh, we're going to learn how to do texturing. Texturing, as I said, how to put pictures what go on walls and stuff like. So, uh, Shift A, or the texture edit sheet button on the toolbar, which I don't have. Uh, you will select faces with left click. This is already covered in the original tutorial, uh, my first one, basic everything. But, if you're a lunatic, or if you just like watching old tutorials, like a saddo, like I am, you will be watching this now. You've probably left by now, but if you haven't, and I'm bo not boring you to death, uh, that's quite surprising. So, yeah, left click, select. Now, right click applies the same texture. So if I put this orange thing here, right click here, same texture, and here, same texture. So I'll move those back. Depends on which one you've got selected at the moment. Now, shift and click select a whole block, a whole brush. So as opposed to just a face, it's a brush, it's an object. Wow. Now control, if you hold down control, it lets you select multiple faces. That's many faces at once, if you're illiterate. So let's say this was a different texture. I could right click on this one. I could also shift right click on this one to make the whole thing. Or I could select multiple faces and make those in here one texture. And of course, make all of these one texture with shift right click on each one. Now, an interesting thing is that if I wanted to invert this selection, so I've only selected these three faces now, I can go ahead and shift, uh, control shift and left click to invert the selection on these three blocks completely invert. So everything is selected now except those three faces. A lot faster than selecting each face manually. And then you can do whatever you like and what well, makes sort of square muffin type things like so. Next I'll teach something interesting. It's related to texturing. It isn't quite about texturing but hey whatever. So I will create a cylinder now. 16 sides. Right. What I'm going to try here is to show you how to make a hole in something without using carve because carve corrupts your VSP, uh, your uh, VMF, VSP, what the hell is that? Corrupts your VMF and screws up your brushwork. I'll bring the grid size down to one and I will cut horizontal lines, cut parallel lines in the cliff face, uh, dear Esther reference there, and then I will quarter this up. So, there. Now, based on the circle right there, I'm going to use a technique where I can use the clipping tool here. Oh, sorry, I'm being a bit tired today. On this particular object, I will remove the insides. So, now if I select this one, I'll zoom in. Yeah, it's at one grid size, which is a bad idea, unless you're doing something as accurate as this. If you create a cylinder in Hammer, it will automatically stick everything to the one by one grid, which is very useful. One of the only useful things Hammer does. In fact, I think this entire tutorial covers everything useful in Hammer, and then everything else is not useful. I guess light mount grids, grids is the one other thing which is useful. So uh, I can delete the circle now, don't need that. Increase the grid size, make all of this stuff a funk detail. Hit apply, uh, bring that over, control M for transform, scale X to the minus one. And I'll get these guys, control M to, to uh, transform, Y to the minus one. So now I've just negative scaled all these corners, make them all into one funk detail, done. So, shift A, face edit sheet, browse, uh, bring out one of these textures, and on the inside, 
Ooh, I'm just going to select all these like this. I don't think there is a ring selection option. If there is, someone give me a shout. But if there was, I'd be using it by now, I bet. Okay, I'll make all these a different texture as well. So here we've got a dark checkerboard on the inside, similar to the Unreal uh, development kit. Now, if you look at these corners, we have two black squares next to each other and two white squares next to each other. That does not form a, por a perfect check board. We want this to be perfect, so I will introduce to you the god of texturing buttons, the Alt button. Hold down Alt and thusly right click on this. This means if you see what shift over, that will line up nicely. This is because it relies on face as opposed to uh, world, which is using the axes. Now, if I kept out by clicking around, you can see that it'll start to distort. We've got a long one here, we've got a short one here. Uh, so, see what it does here. If I out right click from this one, you can see it actually does it relative to that. So what you're going to have to do is keep clicking each one and out right clicking on the next. If you've got a 32 faced one, uh, for example, those concrete circle things in the X to library map I did, it can take a while, uh, but it's nowhere near as long as it would take doing it all manually. So now you can see we have this all trippy stuff going on where it's all checkered properly. Yeah, you can tell because of the weird stuff it does to your head as long as the frame rate's okay from fraps. The next step, oh, hold on, we have these ones as well. If I select all of these out outside guys and gals, please keep in mind it will take four times as long to select with 32. I can hit face. Oh no, actually I hit world afterwards. Yeah, but it's already done it for me. Treat is one, on, and I'm justifying it to the top and the left. Uh, here we have left, right, fit, top, bottom, and center. Fit would make the entire texture fit over that, which you can see there. Um, I'm going to put back the scale to 0.25. Come on, Hammer, behave. Hammer's like a little kid sometimes, like a toddler crawling around on its knees. You wouldn't want to carve up a little toddler, would you? That's why we don't use carve. <laughs> Evil. So this is our textured thing. Last thing to do would be to use smoothing groups on the inside. So if you just select all these, I don't think Hammer has a ring select option yet. Uh, but hey, if it did, I'd know about it by now. Smoothing groups, smoothing groups, smooth out the uh, edges here. So usually this, these would each be a face hardened. Smoothing group makes them act as if they're all one face, pretty much. Makes it all look nice and round as opposed to jaggedy. So I've applied a smoothing group to all of those. You can go to the camera up here, find 3D smooth, hit one, and you'll see them all in a loop there. Okay, back to shader texture polygons. We have these guys. Now I want to put water in this. This is gonna be some kind of swimming pool thing. So back to these views, shift Z. I'll create a block. I'll make sure it's a cuboid block and not a circular one. I'll make this 512, why not? Vertis edit tool. Is that, that's not right at all. There we go. Bring this one over, like that, and like that. Notice I'm using the diagonal lines, it makes it a lot more neat and tidy. Uh, Oh god, I'll hold shift and control at the same time to select all four of these. Make them world, left and top, as before. Good. See how it all fits in together, and this time I'll make the top blue. Now I want a block in the middle at the bottom. So I'll just select our funk detail to get the dimensions into hammer at the bottom. Right, and the bottom will also be black. Excellent, eh? So now what I'm going to do is drag this bottom block up here. Uh, this is part of, still uh, part of the texturing tutorial, don't worry. Now this, I'm going to start using tool textures. Now before I continue, I will show you what tools do. Area portal is fused with area portals, go on the Valve developer community, uh, Wikipedia type thing for that. 
Tools black is completely black, useful for the bottom of pits or in really dark caves where the player isn't going to see the back of it. Block bullets blocks bullets, no uh, crap Sherlock. Block light is invisible, untouchable, creates shadows. Clip is the kind of thing you see in Call of Duty when you've got a car and for some reason you can't jump over it because it's the edge of the level and no one wants you to go there. Uh, then we have things like uh, Hint, Watch Paymail 21 or Stinger's tutorial, which is here. Invisible, uh, don't use invisible, I'd rather you use no draw. Invisible creates fist leafs, as you will also see in Playmail 21 or Stinger's tutorial. Ladder makes an invisible ladder, which you can just climb up if you hold W. No draw is probably the most important out of all of these. What no draw does, it makes the face it's applied to non-existent, practically. Uh, it's useful for optimization, or if you don't want, you know, if you want to, I don't know, optimization mostly. NPC clip, uh, that stops NPCs from going past. Occluders for use with the Occluder entity. Origins, an old one from Half-Life 1. Player clip is clip, but only affecting players and not affecting uh, objects. Skip is used with hint. Uh, Skybox is, you know, you're, you're used to that already. Type in SSKY to find it. Right, so now I'm going to apply no draw to this whole object. So now all of these faces, ignore the Z fighting, all of these faces uh, on this, what we want to be the water, are non-existent except the top, which we will make uh, water wasteland to see. So, since we only want the surface of the water to be visible, and since the engine specifically only wants to see the surface of the water, we make the surface of the water water, and everything else on that same block is no draw. Uh, since in Hammer we use blocks, when it, gets, when it gets compiled, all we see are faces in the game. We don't actually see any blocks in the game, we just see the faces that result from them. They just look connected together like blocks. So here, for the water, we want to create a single face. And to do that, instead of creating a block, we use no draw on everything else. Uh, just a tip, keep in mind that if your water is reflective, like most water is now, you can only have one plane. So I can create water here and here but I cannot make this higher or lower as that would create multiple uh, parallel planes in which things could be reflected in. Like parallel universes. Source can't do that kind of thing, even with portal technology. So that's how to do water, that's how to do round things, corners, uh, stuff like that. Very quick last example I will give. Oh god, it's made of water. Bad idea. Okay, let's get out the trippy texture again. I want this to bend around, so I'll just create a curve using this weird mathsy technique. Doop, doop, doop. As a rule of thumb to optimize it, I will uh, where is that? This one. I'll grab that, making it a funk detail. Uh, away from the brush so that it doesn't create too many vis leaves. Here I take this surface, uh, Alt, right click, Alt, right click, Alt, right click. And, well, you have to work it out for yourself. Sometimes it's hard to get both edges looking nice. And then of course, select all of these, smooth and group. Smooth and groups don't work past 45 degrees. So if you have a 45 degree uh, junction, it will smooth over that but if you have anything larger than 45 degrees, uh, like 90 degrees, it won't. So say under here we have 45 degrees, this would be smooth in the same way. Obviously the top and bottom of it wouldn't look so nice with the curve there. So I hope you got something useful out of watching me rant for, uh, I don't know how many minutes it's been. And I hope I'm able to render this to YouTube and upload it if the file is too big. Okay, any questions, ask them in the comments. Uh, I don't have any specific links to give you today. Cheerio.